Hi everyone, it's Saf and today I am going to be doing books you need to read. Peep my new bookshelves by the way. <laughs> new bookshelves that haven't gone up yet, but they will be up soon. If you follow me on Instagram or anything, you'll know that I am a huge bookworm. All I do is read. I think for me is something that really helps me escape and relax and try and take my focus somewhere else if I need to take a break. It's also a really good way to force yourself to just breathe for a second and go to a whole new world. I have always loved to read ever since I was really, really young. It's been something that's kind of been in my blood to love. I kind of went through a time at one point where I kind of stopped reading for a while, for a few years actually, where I didn't really get into reading. I never gave myself the time to read. And then the lockdown happened and everything and I got back into reading again because I started reading the Harry Potter series again because I'd read the first three books when I was younger and then never read the rest of them. So I was like, oh, here's my opportunity to do that. And I feel like escaping to Hogwarts was the best thing I could do at the time and it re-inspired me to read again. So yeah, I started reading even more than I did before. Currently I'm reading Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix because I'm continuing the series. I adore romance and I love like classic books too. I always do find that classic books are really really hard to get into. So for example I read an Ernest Hemingway recently and I really really struggled to get into it but kind of once you get into a flow you feel like you're connecting with these characters and the era and you definitely feel like you're escaping reality and going to this different place. So books for me are definitely an escape and I love it so so much. I definitely don't have a favourite genre and you'll see that in this big pile of books that I've got here of some favourites. I guess let's just get straight into it and I hope you enjoy. If you've been here a long time you may remember me doing quite a lot of book reviews with my sister when I was younger. We used to do them all the time and we used to do them when we were away on holiday specifically and we'd <laughs> talk about the books we were reading on holiday and we'd probably read about four books in a week's trip away to France. So this is a book review updated of books you need to read. Let's kick this off with an absolute favourite of mine and this is Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. I read this book in a day. I did not put this down. My family decided let's go to Ikea on the day that I was reading this and I literally walked around the store like this because I was completely obsessed with the story. So I feel like it's a book that I could easily read a few times and enjoy it the same every single time I read it. The writer also wrote All the Bright Places which is obviously now a film and I adored that book too but I actually read that more recently. I'm gonna give you a little read of the back because I always love reading the back of a book because I think it gives you a really great insight to the story without giving too much away because I'm always worried that I'm going to give too much away of these stories. Everyone thinks they know Libby Strout but no one's ever looked past her weight to see who she really is. Why am I doing this? <laughs> Since her mum's death Libby's been hiding but now she's ready for high school. Everyone thinks they know Jack Masselin too but Jack's swaggering confidence is hiding a secret he must keep at all costs. Be charming, be hilarious, and don't get too close to anyone. Then Jack meets Libby, and their worlds change, because sometimes when you meet someone, the whole universe just comes into focus. This, I swear, I just cried. The whole ending, I cried. I really loved the way the characters blended together, and you learnt so, so much from just the relationship that they had, and seeing past, you know, not judging a book by its cover, and seeing past the person, and knowing that its personality before anything. You know, you have this beautiful connection between Libby and Jack, and it's a really lovely connection because they're both going through something in very, very different ways. You know, standing up for each other and falling in love in a way that is so passionate. It's beautiful, very well written. I was hooked. I think what's special about this book as well, each chapter is each person's perspective. So you have Libby's chapters and you have Jack's chapters and it kind of like, you see it from each perspective. And I love books that do that because I feel like you get obviously the perspective of each character and how they're viewing it. Very special book. And if you need to get back into reading or would like to get into reading, this is the first one you need to read. Okay, so next up is another romance because I love romance books. And this is I Heart New York by Lindsay Kelk. I adored this. One of my friends recommended this series and I have now got every single book. I've read half of them and I'm about to read after the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I'm gonna read 
the I Heart Vegas. This, oh my goodness, amazing. I read this as a lockdown read and I did read it fairly quickly. It starts with a punch and it continues with a punch for the rest of the story. The back says, Fleeing her cheating boyfriend and clutching little more than a crumpled bridesmaid's dress, Angela jumps on a plane, destination NYC. Holed up in a cute hotel room, Angela gets a New York makeover from her new best friend Jenny and a whirlwind tour of the city that never sleeps. Before she knows it, Angela is dating two guys. And best of all, she gets to write about it in her new blog. But it's one thing telling readers about your romantic dilemmas and it's another figuring out them for yourself. Angela has fallen head over heels for the Big Apple, but does she heart New York more than home? It is amazing. I think the way it is written really makes you feel like you are in her shoes and you're experiencing everything from her point of view. It's such an easy read as well, so you feel like it's not too hard to understand, there's nothing complicated about it and you do just you get it. The moment you start reading it, you just understand where where you're sitting as a reader and the whole series is just a must read. I just recommend this a ton for a really, really easy read and something just easy to fall in love with, really. It also does make you fall in love with New York. Like, I'm very, very excited to go back and I have a very long list of places I want to go just because of the book, so I'm really excited. So this book is Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. This has a very, very special place in my heart. I read it a really long time ago. I don't wanna to give too much away because I think for me, the special thing about it was that I didn't know anything about the book. I bought it because I love John Green, I love his writing, and I just, I had no idea what it was gonna be about. I don't really wanna read the back, but I will just so that you can kind of get a good idea of the kind of story that it is. I would just go into this without knowing. I would just order it on Amazon right now, or go into your local bookshop and get it because it's just a story that you have to read. So the back does say, 16 year old Aza is trying to be a good daughter, a good friend and a good student. She's also trying to track down fugitive billionaire Russell Pickett who has vanished without a trace. Alongside her best and most fearless friend Daisy, Aza sets off in pursuit of the truth and a $100,000 reward. The trail leads them to Pickett's son, Davis, a sometime friend of Aza's who might have the clues they need. But as her compulsive thoughts spiral take an ever tighter grip on her mind, Aza finds herself struggling to keep her investigations and her life from falling apart. Please just go and order it right now or just go and get it because it's just a book you'll fall straight into and the meaning of Turtles All The Way Down is just amazing as well. And you will understand that too. And everything just like fits into place. And I kind of came away from this book, like I just wanted to go back and do it all again. So next is Good Vibes and Good Life by Vex King. This is actually a self-help book. This book is amazing. And it gave me such a different outlook on life. It's basically manifestation, law of attraction, and all of that stuff. Um, it is just amazing. The way it is explained is so easy. And you kind of get his whole backstory on how it's helped him and how it can help you and me and everything. And it's really, really helped, you know, just small habits and changes that you can make that you can kind of manifest the dream life that you'd like. I feel like this book popped up in my life at a really great point and reading this was just fantastic and I've recommended it to so many people. So next up is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. I have no words for this book. My family and I watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix within like two, three days. I love reading things I've watched just purely because I feel like you can vision the characters exactly how they're portrayed. I always feel like if I read a book and then they bring out a film or a show or a series, I'm always disappointed because it's not how I visioned the characters and having kind of a vision of what she looks like helped me so much when reading this book. I was like, wow, I can actually see these characters and how she's seeing things is it was amazing. So could not put this down and I read it. It arrived in the morning and it was finished by the evening. It was like over. I was like, it's done, I just loved it. When she is sent to an orphanage at the age of eight, Beth Harmon soon discovers two ways to escape her surroundings, playing chess and taking the little green pills given to her and the other children to keep them subdued. Before long, it becomes apparent that she has a talent and as she progresses to the top of the US chess rankings, she's able to forge a new life for herself, but she can never quite overcome her urge to self-destruct. For Beth, there's more at stake than merely winning and losing. A modern classic, The Queen's Gambit is a powerful portrait of genius and addiction, success and survival. 
it was phenomenal. I feel like if you understand chess, it's a little bit more easy to understand. I think if you have a general kind of idea of how chess works, it makes things a bit easier because it does do a lot of explaining of chess and which pieces she's moving. I think it could be a little bit complicated or hard to understand if you don't quite understand chess. So just watch like a how to play chess on YouTube, just so you understand where the pieces are because there is a lot of explaining on how chess is played and how she plays it. And my sister and I have played chess forever. So I understood what was going on, kind of have a semi understanding of how chess works before reading it, but otherwise it's so clever, so well written. Last but not least is The Italian Girl by Lucinda Riley. I read this literally a couple of weeks ago and I read it super duper quickly. I mean, I went on holiday and didn't really read because I was with my friends and I kind of semi touched on reading it a couple times. Once the holiday was over and everything, I just read it all in a, in a day. Rosanna Menici is a just a girl when she meets Roberto Rossini, the man who will change her life. In the years to come, their destinies are bound together by their extraordinary talents as opera singers and by their enduring but obsessive love for each other, a love that will ultimately affect the lives of all those closest to them. For, as Rosanna slowly discovers, their unison is haunted by irreversible events from the past set against a memorable backdrop of Lucinda Riley's trademark, evocative locations. The Italian girl unfolds into a poignant and unforgettable tale of love, betrayal and self-discovery. There were plot twists in every corner of this book. In every chapter, something happened. I also feel like it did a really great job of hinting things were gonna happen, but not quite saying them because our lead character, Rosanna, was too young to know what was going on. And I think that really engaged you because you were like, I bet it's this, but it might not be. And I also really liked the journey that you went on. It's so gripping because you just don't wanna leave this world that's been created around you, you can really, really envision it and see it for yourself and you feel like you're in the story with her and I feel like that is just so powerful. Also, it's all about music and like opera singing and stuff, so obviously I connected with it so much. But it's amazing and you must, 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 must read it. It's huge, I know, but I finished it in a day, so anything's possible at this point. <laughs> so there we go. There is some books that you need to read. <laughs> They're definitely books that are going to inspire you to love reading. I'd love to know if you have any book suggestions because I'm always looking for new books to get even though I have way too many but please let me know any suggestions that you have because I'd love to know what you guys are reading at the moment and if you read any of these books I'd love to know your thoughts on them too. But yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy whatever you're reading and I'll see you guys soon. Happy reading. Love you bye.